Hey guys, well, are we all surviving the polar vortex? I'll tell you what, minus 20 is not fun, so kind of stay inside and doing some work. A couple weeks ago, I made some inline spinners, and we did that. Today we're going to come back, and we're going to make some chatterbait style lures. Only in this situation, let me show you how I made them weedless. Stick around. All right, guys, as I said, we're going to work on something here that's similar to a chatterbait. We don't want to get in trouble with C-Man now, do we? Basically, you're going to need your blades, your basic blades you can buy. I picked mine up from Lure Parts Online. They have some here I think, with the holes. I think they call those bubblers. Uh, I've got them in stainless steel. Uh, I've got them in gold. I kind of like the gold. Uh, we have a lot of Bluegill is our forage fish, so I've always thought the gold is good for that. They pretty much always come flat and straight. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to bend them. You're going to have to put a little bend to them. I, got, I just have a small vise. I stick them in the vise and bend them over, and that will usually do the job for you. So you have no problem doing that. You don't have to be exact and perfect on every one of them. We're going to need our split rings, and uh, of course we're going to attach them with our snaps. Now, well, we're going a little bit different. Instead of our standard uh, chatterbait, we're going to kind of go with some weedless versions. And what we're going to start out with, here is a football head, shaky head, and this has to be by Bass Pro Shop. It's theirs, but the key to it is... Our line tie has to be horizontal. It's got to be sticking sideways with the lure. It can't be sticking lengthways with it. So as long as it's sideways, you're good. There's other brands will work. This one just happens to be Bass Pro Shop. The other one that I found up this last year is here. This is by Strike King. It's a jointed structure head. Package is 3 8 I believe this is actually the half ounce because I bought some of each. 3 8 and half ounce. So it's a jointed structure head. Again, it's got a pivot point now that's missing in the other stuff. I like that extra pivot point. I think that'll help keep from losing fish. When they're jumping, they're trying to throw a hook. Anytime you can attach a pivot point, I think you're better off. Again, we have to have the line tie horizontal in order to get the job done. And basically when I'm doing this, let's start out, we're going to do this one, and we'll put a gold blade on it. When I start out, I'm going to take my split ring, you will need a split ring pliers. And for me, what I have found the easiest way to do this is I get the split ring, get a hold of it here. <clears throat> There we go. I get the split ring started. All right, so I'm started on here. And there we go, I've started, but now I don't put it all the way on. I stop right there, and now I'm gonna put my blade on. But this is where you have to be very careful because this is where you could put the blade on backwards. In fact, it may be better for you put the flat one on then bend the blade afterwards because as we're putting this on right now if we end up with it backwards the bend's going to be facing the wrong direction so basically I get that where I can start it just have enough of it I can put that through and I start that and now I put it all the way around until it's on and there we go I even did it right the first time got the blade on the right way and of course the next thing we're going to do is go with our snap put that in and get a hold of it here sometimes you got to push it down in there a little bit to get it through Depending on your snap, sometimes they go right through there, 
sometimes the arm has been out a little farther. And there we are. That's all it takes. We're set up. But the biggest difference now is we don't have a skirt and we're going to run a soft plastic on here to where we're going to have a weedless chatterbait style lure because we're not going to leave the hook sticking out. Now, here would be your normal little craw trailer, uh, three and a quarter inch. I find those aren't quite big enough. So what I like to do is move up to like a four and a quarter or something like that because that gives me that extra body that I need to give me enough length to get it on this style of hook. Those are always fun to get over the hook, ain't they? One more pivot. And then basically we're just going to do as we would any lure we're trying to run weedless. Bury that point. And I got him upside down, but that's okay. There we go. Now it's right. Now I got him so it's right for you so you can see it. So there we go. So now I have basically a weedless chatterbait. Chatterbait style. How's that? Now, that's one works. This one you can do basically the same thing. I'm not going to go through putting all the blade on because the blade putting on is going to be actually the same way. We put the blade on. We're sitting with this system. We could come back and do the same thing. And, I mean, don't let your imagination... I mean, that's the only thing that can stop you. Because whether we're using this... I mean, here's a, a tube. We could put a tube on it. Here's a real big crawl we could put on that. Here's a, a bush hog type, brush hog type. We could use something like that. How about a paddle bait? We can even go with paddle bait, paddle tail baits. Those would work. But this one also gives you another option. And that is, we still have some skirts around. So why don't we take a skirt and we're going to come right up and I'm going to run that skirt over there. You got to push it around a little bit to get it to go where you want it to go. But we'll get it over the hump and over the head. And there we go. I now have the skirt up. Our head is still going to move. We got moving on the head. But now I can still actually run this. Just if I was putting on, doing this normally, skirt kind of gets in your way a little, so it gives you a little more, but it, this just totally gives you a completely different look. Now I've still got, with the blade on it, I'm still doing my chatterbait style. I've got a skirt similar to a chatterbait. Now I'm using a big bush hog for a trailer. And, you know, it's just like anything else. You, you lose the tail or something, you lose that. Fine, or this one isn't working right. Take this one off and find something else. Put a different trail. Take that one off and maybe you put a big bug like this on or, you know, tube. Or, to be honest with you, in that situation, how about a short plastic worm? Just think you could take a little five-inch plastic worm, curly tail worm, put something like that on there, have a chatterbait style, with a small plastic worm to go with it. So there's all kinds of ways you can do this. Look through the books, see what different combinations you can set up. Just remember, the hook set has to be horizontal to make this work. But you can do it with shaky heads. And right here, the Strike King jointed structure head works good. I'm sure there's other brands have something similar to that. I think I've seen some where you just buy a head. I'm not sure if the, the point is correct on it or not. You'd have to look on that. But there's all kinds of options you can do. Put one of these together yourself. As I said, the blades, I've done mine from Lure Parts Online. I'll bet on Amazon, eBay, I'm sure there's all kinds of places you can do these. Do not go to Walmart and buy the 
Eagle Claw split rings. I've had them literally pull apart. Buy some good split rings. Whenever I'm ordering blades from such as Lure Parts Online, that's where I'm buying these. I'm buying stainless steel split rings from them because those are good quality split rings that I know I'm not going to fall apart. I have seen at least two chatterbait style lures I've made and I've seen them pull apart at a split ring because I had cheaper split rings I'd picked up at Walmart. I came up with this idea, I don't know, three years ago now, and I'll never forget. <laughs> well, here's the very first time I ever tried one of these after I built it. of mine I guess you'd say basically I've taken a shaky head with your spring in it so you can run weedless mounted a chatterbait blade on it in today's case I'm using about a four inch bug or craw the orange color with the spring I can run her weedless and uh, just kind of something I put together and I caught a fish on the first day out with it so I like that chunk on that one. And there we are, we're still back with my When I made these the first time, I, I really didn't have any idea if it'd work, if everything would work right. That was the day I took them to a lake and stood on the bank, and I'll tell you, I guess I was sold on them ever since. When you can go in, stand in the bank, pick up two nice bass like that, just with your very first time you ever throwing a lure you made, uh, that kind of sells you on it real fast. Well, there you go, guys. There's a couple different styles of a weedless chatterbait style lure. At least it's weedless and we're using a blade similar to the chatterbaits. So it's kind of on that same line. I've had a lot of success with them. I love them. Uh, they work real well. and They'll catch a lot of fish. Thanks for sticking with me. Subscribe to the channel if you would. Hope to see you again real soon.